I took the ISACA CISA certification and I failed. If you don't know, the CISA stands for Certified Information Systems Auditor, and it is ISACA's most popular certification. Um, it's not necessarily fully focused on security at all. I actually thought that it stood for Certified Information Security Auditor. That was my bad. Um, but I mean, it didn't really change anything. This particular certification is still kind of listed as one of the top three certifications that I have seen um, on you know different job postings and things that people want you to have. Generally, they only want you to have one of the CISSP, CISA, or CISM, but it's usually those three that are listed. So I really wanted to get this certification. It just didn't happen this time. For those who may be new to the channel, I'll basically tell you a little bit about this particular certification and me because I actually started studying for this last year in May. I purchased the study material officially from ISACA and I started studying for it, but it's the only certification that I've ever like started studying for that I was just in the middle of it. I was like, no, I'm not doing this. I quit. Uh, I wasn't enjoying it. I didn't feel like I was learning anything. And so, yeah, I just had no intentions of doing it anymore until this year. This year, I thought about it and I was like, well, um, I, I purchased the study material. I don't want to just let it go to waste. And so what I did was I tried to take it. Um, I actually took the CISM last month and I passed it. So I kind of felt like I had that like ISACA way of thinking and having that mindset. And so I tried and I'll be honest with you, I still did not enjoy studying for this at all, but I tried. I gave it an honest effort. And when I went to take the exam, I failed. This isn't going to be a super negative video, but I do want to get some of the negative things out of the way because acting like they didn't happen, acting like that wasn't the situation isn't going to get me anywhere. So let's just talk about some of the negative things and then we'll kind of talk about the positive. First is kind of the motivation around taking it. I'm not going to BS you guys. This is the kind of the one certification I think this year that I just... I, I was doing it 100% for the career, like that was it. Um, like I said, it's one of the top three that I keep seeing, but I personally was not interested in the certification at all. I think even last year when I purchased the study material, it wasn't like I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna learn it and uh, you know, I'd be excited and stuff. It, it was none of that. It's just doing it for the career. And so maybe that's part of the reason why I found it to be really boring. Uh, another issue, and just this is how it is with the ISACA certifications, is they don't really allow you to be very hands-on with the stuff that they teach. It's just not that type of exam. So a lot of the things that you're learning is things that you know you might be able to apply if you're doing that as part of your job, but if you're not, it's not going to be really something that you can be very hands-on with. Um, it's not like super um, you know, vocabulary and term heavy. It's mainly just trying to get you to think a certain way, and that's fine. I feel like, unlike the CISM, I, I just straight up didn't agree with a lot of the stuff that they were teaching with the CISM. With the CISA, I feel like it wasn't so much that I didn't disagree with it. It was just more so I, I didn't really understand it, and I couldn't really um, put myself in the, the mindset that they needed, but also just the material was not something that I was able to, to really understand the way I needed to, and that's the reason why I failed. The other problem is that I took the exam before I was ready. I was not fully ready to go. Um, we'll talk about what the actual results of the, the test was in a minute because I do know, you know exactly what my score was now, but um, I just wasn't ready. I actually, on the day of the exam, which by the way, I took the exam at 4.45 in the morning. I'm not even kidding you. That's the, that's the only availability that they had. So I took it at 4.45 in the morning, but I was awake, so I'm not making any excuses. Um, but when I took it, I wasn't ready. I was not ready. I felt like um, specifically domain one, I felt like I didn't understand it. I didn't know it. And domain one, by the way, is auditing and planning. We'll talk about it in a second, but that's kind of the main part of this particular uh, exam. So yeah, I went in there feeling super defeated. I really felt like let's just get this over with so I can enjoy the rest of my day, which is not a good mindset to have going into the exam, but that's what I felt like. To be honest with you, I actually felt a little bit better as I started doing the exam because I felt more and more like, okay, maybe I know the answer to this. Maybe, maybe this isn't so bad. And by the time I got to the end of the exam, I actually felt a little bit more confident that I had passed than in the beginning of the exam. But unfortunately, regardless, I still failed. One last thing before I talk about the actual results. Um, if you're curious what it is that I used this particular time, um, I really had two resources. Number one was the QAE database by Saka. 
that's what I spent $300 on. Uh, it worked great for the CISM, not so much for the CISA. Uh, and then the other study material was Hamang Doshi. Has, he has a Udemy course and I use that one. Um, I don't feel like he didn't teach it very well or anything like that. Again, it was just me, it was me, it was me. That's the reason why I failed. But um, those are the two resources that I used. If you've never taken an ISACA certification before, I can tell you how the, the exam kind of works. So you basically, at the well, I'll tell you the end of it. At the end, you are given a score. It basically says you passed or you failed, and that's it. It doesn't tell you any other information. What you have to do is you have to wait up to two weeks, and almost every time it's taken about two weeks. You have to wait two weeks for them to officially email you the results. And when you get the results, it'll tell you what your overall score was, which is the one you really care about. But then it also goes through and tells you um, what your score was for each of the domains. The CISA has five domains. And uh, for three of the five domains, I did fine. One of the domains, I, I think I failed by just a little bit, or maybe I passed by just a little bit. I can't remember. But one of the domains I just did horribly on. I did absolutely terrible on and it was domain one i think which is auditing and planning so if i would have spent more time studying the one that i knew i was the weakest on i would have gotten a better score and i probably would have passed because that first domain man that score was just awful i had it terrible uh, but anyways the overall score which is i guess what matters is that i failed by nine points and to be honest with you when i first you know i got my results and it said that I failed, I was like, that's it. I'm never taking this again. I don't want to think about it. It is what it is. But then I got the results and I failed by just nine points and it was damn near all domain one. And so now I'm feeling kind of weird. I'm feeling like, you know what? Maybe I should try it again. I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm a little torn now because again, I'm not interested in the certification personally. I don't really like it at all. I have never enjoyed studying for it. Um, to be honest, I don't even know if it's even worth trying to get for my career because I don't technically need it. I have the other two big ones. I have the CISSP. I have the CISM. I don't really need this one, but I failed it by just nine points and all of that came from domain one. If I just go back and study domain one, maybe I'll pass it next time. I don't know. The last issue is around me and college. I am going back to school in August. I'm going for my MBA in IT management. And to be honest with you, I'm very excited for it, but I'm also really, really nervous. And the reason is because I feel like Unlike my bachelor's degree, which was in cybersecurity and information assurance, I mean, I've been working in cybersecurity for a long time. Of course, I've been working in IT for even longer, but I feel really comfortable with cybersecurity, whereas the MBA in IT management is going to be a lot more classes that I'm not super familiar with or even comfortable with or even interested in. I might not be interested in all these classes. And so what I wanted to do was I wanted to use this particular certification to prove to myself that I can do damn near anything. I can focus, I can study. When, when, when motivation fails, I will still be disciplined enough to do what I need to do to achieve the goals that I'm trying to achieve. That's what I wanted to prove to myself with this certification. But I failed, so now I, I don't know, man. I just don't feel as comfortable doing the, the degree as I originally did. It's okay, I'm not gonna stop. I'm still gonna go for the degree, but yeah, this sucks. All right, so to kind of get to the positives here, like one of the things I really had to tell myself and had to realize is that, you know, it, it wasn't a, a complete waste. Yeah, I'm not happy. Yeah, at the end of the day, I you know, I failed, so I'm not gonna be able to really show that I studied for it, but um, still, I mean, I am really successful in my career and I got here because I took chances like this. I studied, I tried, there have been plenty of certifications that I failed along the way, but if, if I just quit then and there and just never continued or tried or kept pushing, I wouldn't be where I am now. I am damn near extremely successful, I would say. I never thought that I would be where I am now. I always wanted to be where I am, but I never thought that I would get there. So. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's okay. Um, to be honest with you, though, I'm not going to just stop here and do nothing else. I, I say it all the time. I'm going to say it again. I did not come this far to just come this far. I have other goals. I have other things that I want to get done this year, and I'm going to do them. I'd say the other positive is that, well, yes, I'm, I may not take it again immediately. In fact, I have no plans to take it again immediately. Um, I do actually have room 
a little bit later at the end of the year from my plans. I, I have maybe a month or two that I should have free to be able to, to make up for whatever it is I may have screwed up over the year. And so I will potentially take this again. I don't want to take it immediately because I'm kind of burned out from like doing this whole non-technical stuff. It just isn't what I want to do right now, but I can come back and I just might. I might come back and do this one again. Since I saw the results and since I saw that it was domain one that I miserably failed, if I focus on domain one and I really study that particular section, I, I honestly think I'm going to pass next time. And so you may be wondering, if I'm not going to immediately take it again, then what's next? Well, you see, I was supposed to do another ISACA certification, the last one. I was supposed to do C-Risk, but I have decided that I'm not going to, at least not right now. Um, to be honest, like I said, I'm just kind of burned out a little bit. I'm not like super burned out, but I can feel myself getting there. I can feel myself being burned out, being frustrated by continuing to do these type of certifications that I can't like be hands on with. I am a tinker. I like to, to be hands on. I like to play with things. I like to configure things. I like to just do things and sitting and studying all day and not being able to apply it just isn't going to work out right now. So I have decided that for now. My next certification, the next thing that I'm going to study for is going to be the CASP by CompTIA. To be honest with you, I think the CASP is going to be good for me just because I'm trying to kind of take a break from some of the, the like hard ISACA stuff. And I thought about potentially just doing pen testing stuff instead, but I feel like the pen testing stuff would be going way too technical, way too much in the weeds when I'm going to have to come right back out of it for the MBA and IT management. So instead, I'm just going to focus on the CASP. To be honest with you, I've actually been studying for it now for about two weeks. So um I'm studying for it. I'm finding it to be a bit more interesting. I'm more engaged. I'm more interested. I'm kind of working on labs and I'm studying it. And if there's something in there where I'm like, hmm, could I actually practice that? I'm, I'm trying to find ways to practice it. It's just, it's a much more enjoyable experience. And while it's still going to be pretty difficult, I, I'm ready and I'm more excited to do this than I was the Isaka stuff. Make no mistake about it. The CASP is going to be difficult and it is something I'm interested in. But of course, it's not like it's ultra hands on. It's CompTIA. CompTIA is CompTIA no matter what certification they have. So it is going to be a ton of acronyms. It's a lot of vocabulary. Most of the questions are going to be, you know, questions and answers. But it's my understanding that more of the questions are subjective, kind of like the ISACA in ISC squared. And of course, um, there's going to be simulations and apparently virtual labs as well. I, I don't know the, this particular certification is going to be difficult. It's kind of the, the highest level security certification for CompTIA. So we'll see what, what happens. But like I said, I'm kind of excited for it. And that's what I'm working on. But that's it for now. So until my next video, you guys take care.